Welcome everybody. My name is Eric Bynum and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about Frances Butler Lee today and her life after the Civil War on her Georgia plantation. Um, Lee is known for her book, 10 Years on a Georgia Plantation Since the War, where she wrote about her experiences and some of the sl former slaves' experiences as they continue to work on her plantation. Um, it was quite a shift for Frances and her family after having freed the slaves, uh, and now they're paying them to work the same land that they were forced to work for generations before. Now, Lee and her family tried to be a little, tried to be as fair as possible but it was difficult during these times, and she, she seemed to really, you know, dislike the idea of slavery and really try to help the, the former slaves in, in many different ways afterwards. Part of her book, she writes about how her family started a store for these freedmen. They would go and they would go into the city and they would bring back the goods that everybody needed, whether it was food, clothing, whatever that may be, and they essentially sold these to the freedmen at cost. Now, they're incurring the you know, the transportation costs and everything like this. And after a year, she she finds out that the store is losing $3,000 a year. It's quite a bit after the Civil War. So she shuts down the store and doesn't really, I mean, she's more relieved by this than anything because, you know, in her book, she starts talking about how the slave, or the former slaves, excuse me, it was natural for them to want to go into the nearby city of Darien and kind of enjoy a little swagger and purchase from the stores that everybody else purchased from. You know, even though they were being taken advantage of and everything was, you know, the costs were raised uh, when they were selling to the, the former slaves. But, you know, it, it kind of relieved uh, Frances Lee of some of the, that burden that, that she felt by trying to acquire all of these goods for the, the, the former slaves. Um, one of the things that I, I, I thought was really interesting as I did my research, I found an, an article with a study from the National Bureau of Economics Research. And they were looking at former slave-owning families who had mul you know, a multitude of slaves versus wealthy families who had none or very few slaves. And what they did was they compared the how they rebounded after the end of slavery with the family's wealth and it was actually quite interesting um they used census data they kind of they went back to 1850 to create a baseline for a lot of these families but then they carried through with their children and their grandchildren and kept up with census data all the way through 1940. so what they found was that if you were a a slave owning family at the end of the war, your wealth declined dramatically by 1870, okay, compared to your counterparts that were wealthy without slaves. However, the key here is that a lot of those families they found that were former slave owners, their children actually rebounded and became even wealthier than their counterparts by 1900. So there was something in there that that allowed them to recreate that wealth that they had lost after the Civil War and emancipation. Um, one of the things that that we one of the interesting tidbits about her book, Ten Years uh, on Her Plantation in Georgia, was her story about the local doctor. So she describes the doctor as being this, you know, he was about seventy years age of age, and he really was struggling at the time. Previously, during slavery, he had a set salary that the plantation owners were were paying him to take care of the slaves. Well, now all of that's gone, and now he's scrambling to find patients just to get by. And so he had really fallen as one of the, the former wealthy individuals in the town of nearby Darien um, to really just kind of struggling to get by. Um, and... Francis Lee talks about how life was a struggle for a lot of them, you know, uh, the freed slaves, the, you know, the former plantation owners, everybody. And so when you have freedmen who stay on to work in your plantation, well, they don't have any money. How are they going to feed themselves? How are they going to clothe themselves? And so Francis Lee and her family would essentially loan them 
you know, and give them food and give them clothing and whatnot. And their agreement was that at the end of the year, those farmers, the new tenant, essentially tenant farmers, would get half the, the crop. So they would take the feed and the cloth, clothing and stuff out of that at the end of the year. Um, and this kind of brought me back to that sod busting book that we were reading that talked about how, you know, former slaves had the opportunity to grab free land out west. But they didn't really have the ability. When you look at it due to the hostility of the white settlers, you have, you know, just the, the what they had to go through, essentially. You know, in order to claim the free land, you had you were required to move out west, file a claim, pay a fee, settle on the land, improve the land, prove that you did all this, pay another fee, and then you get the title to the land. But how is somebody that is uneducated, poor, illiterate, and a former slave going to be able to do this? They're just not. So just wanted to bring you a little bit about Francis uh, Lee and, you know, life after the Civil War. Thanks for watching. Take care.